Welcome to the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. It's a big one today. Big names. Our favourite, favourite people. Kitty Flanagan. Yes. Ooh. Tony Martin. Yes. Bang. Us. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. What are we here? Sam. Yes. You ever seen someone doing it in the wild? Doing the business, you know, uh, getting it on. Apart from Swanee's dog. Doing it like they do in the Discovery Channel, if yes. you know what I mean. Mm. I don't, uh, you know, I don't think I have, and it's not through lack of trying, because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm hiding in the bushes a lot. I you know, know I mean. and you don't go anywhere. Some people have a medallion around their neck. You have binoculars. <laughs> Mm. I commit. You are you know prepared. What I mean? If I'm going to see someone, is that? Did you do you that? You go longer than two seconds though, because Dino and Chrissy both think if you go longer than two seconds, if you do see it, we're talking that's about a how long. Talking the two seconds is how long you look for, not yeah. how long you last. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we. I'm glad we clarified that. More, more wholesome content coming up. Yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie, the podcast. Oh, well, good morning, Melbourne, and welcome to your Tuesday. Welcome to your Tuesday. How well do you think we're going at home? Three sick children. Yuck. The worst. Oh, the worst. Eh? It's fair it's... to say my wife's not uh, not loving life at the moment, Chris. No, no, she wouldn't be. We've got a similar situation at our place Jeez, too. It's rife, isn't it? Yeah. Do we think maybe that the kids have been locked up for two and a half years? And so they lose their immunity. Maybe. Do they build the shield. I feel like we're back at the start of, remember when the kids start kindergarten? Your co- childcare, absolutely. They always come home sick. Yeah, yeah. It, feel, it does immunity. feel that way. It does yeah. feel that way. So if you're experiencing that, you know, thoughts and prayers, we're, we're with you. We're How with do you know you. they're not faking it? Well, no, not. 39, uh, plus 39 temperature is Ooh. probably a giveaway yeah. for the two girls. Jackie Brown, though, uh, He's he's three parts through uh, Fast and Furious. Yes, fiftieth time the whole series. Right. So this maybe it's questionable. Yeah, it's questionable. Uh, bam, bam. His motivations for and staying just, at home. You just don't have the energy to call no, it, do you? Fight. It's like, oh, all right, yeah. all three of you. you fine. Got, well, the in-laws are in town. Like, mm. You know, Loza, yes. Loza the machine, the mother-in-law can yeah. just look after him. Absolutely. Right. Kitty Flanagan's on the show today. Fabulous. Her comedy show Fisk uh, series two starting. How freaking good! I can't wait. God, I loved. Fisk. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Nothing beats a cosy winter getaway. Oh, or escaping to a tropical paradise. Whatif.com helps you make up for getaways you've missed. Plan and book everything travel all in one place. Jump online or the What If app. What If? It's Aussie for travel. The following program is classified M. It contains adult themes. Oh. Yes. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. <laughs> Uncut. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yes. Whoa. Probably still some people on the nest as we speak. So it's 6.11, just remember, and we're prepared. We're prepared for some fruity callers. Don't mm. you worry about this. On the back of whose plot line is it anyway? Yesterday, mm. Dino, yeah. his life is a movie. Yeah. yeah. And he described a certain scenario or scene from a famous movie. Did I ever tell you guys when I was on holiday, I saw two people humping in public? Really? That's, Jeez, that's best, exciting. Isn't it? When I say so hum- humping in public, that was sort of private. They were uh, they were going at it in an old-timey car. Mm. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah it was very- oh, that's hot. It was, there's it was, a lot of room in there, though. How long can you watch two strangers do that before you're a creep? <clears throat> mm. Oh, two seconds. Two seconds? Yeah. No way. That's way too short. Interesting question. Interesting question. What movie were we speaking about? Titanic. Titanic. Uh, great scene, wasn't it, Swanee, when the car windows fogged up? Great, great scene. Uh, I stand by my assertion that two seconds is the maximum you can watch it without being a creep. Wow. Having said that, it is the most exciting thing to stumble across, apart from someone in the nude in the wild. Two seconds is too quick. No, it's not. Your eyes need to eat. <laughs> Swanee, you can see them in the nude in the wild and on the shag in the wild. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can, you can have two. They can be both together. Um, so, in relation to that, have I've you seen... I've never seen it. I've never have seen, you never seen it? Never seen anybody going for it. I've seen it. I was working a breakfast shift at Nova Brecky in Brisbane mm. back in my playing days. Actually, young days, Swanee. So, Nova Brisbane started in 2005. I reckon it was in our first year. Brand new studios. And we looked... You looked towards an apartment block. Yeah. So doing it up there with Ash Kip and Lutzy yes. at the time. That mm. was before Susie came along. Uh-huh. And we're in an ad break mm. and Lutzy said to me, Hey Big Fella, have a look there at the window. And looked out the window and down slightly. Mm. And this young lass. I was say young lass, I was about the same age, Swanee. She yeah. looked like about a 21, 22 year old. Uh-huh. I was yeah. twenty one at the time. Well, 
She's getting it on. She's getting it on and putting on a show for all to see. And obviously, Swanee, we went a bit longer than two seconds, man. Lutty, the creep. Yeah, he's uh, the creep. He's not the you. creep. That's it. Well, that's right. He led me into it. Yes. And it was. <laughs> it was exciting. It was thrilling. Yeah. And uh, it went on for a while until she <laughs> looked up. She saw two creeps. Looking through the window. Yuck. Uh, and then, obviously, the windows. The obviously. blinds got closed. Yes. But, Swanee, for a moment there, you thought, geez, how exciting is this? So exciting. You've seen them on the shag in the wild. Great. So I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand, Swanee. It's been in our job. It's been out in public. Mm. So it ticks all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. 13, 24, 10. Mm. I want you to give me a call. Mm. Have you seen someone on the shag in the wild? Can be in any setting, any scenario. It can be inside. can mm. be outside. Yeah. Wherever you want. Mm. I've got some great prizes, Dana. Yeah, how long did you watch? So that's an important question. Well, that's not. It doesn't We'll really ask matter. you. Yeah, we'll Come arms ask. with that information. Call us 10K a day and make it be yours, 13, 24, 10. Blair from Phillip Island. Where have you seen it in the wild, mate? G'day, guys. How are we? Good, Blair. That's good. Um, so I work in Glen Ira as like a council worker, um, doing cutting trees around power lines. So we use like a tower that you know goes pretty high up. Great vantage and, point. Um, and uh, I jump up in the tower, go to cut the tree, and uh, look up on like the third story, blinds wide open, and here's these two just getting it on. I'll take a quick peek and go, oh. Wasn't expecting to see that at 6.30 in the morning, no. but okay. Mm. I hope you had the harness on, Blair. And <laughs> then I'll, I'll try not to keep looking, and they obviously glance up and see me up in the tree and <laughs> quickly, quickly close the blinds, and off they go. Get back onto it. Who's the uh, blind closer in that situation? I'm guessing the guy. Um, Honestly, wasn't paying attention because mm. it felt a bit awkward looking. Mm. Not in my situation, it wasn't. It was the lady. It was the right. lady. She was very uh, confident. Hey. Very confident, Swanee. So, Blair, obviously, Blair's probably past the two second rule, it's fair to say. Yeah. Lucky he didn't fall yeah. out of a cherry picker. Now, I'm not calling, I'm not judging Blair's character, but I'm saying if you were a creep, an arborist would be a fantastic job. It really um, would. It probably would be. It probably would be. There's a lot of older blokes in there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, he's on the phone now, Dan. I want you just asking. Uh, Blair, are you a creep? No. Oh, there we go. He's not a creep. Great. So he answered for himself. Yeah. Fights, his, fights his own battles. Don't worry about that. I'm going to give you a $250. What if voucher? Uh, let's go to Kerry. Everyone that gets on will be in the running for 10K a day in May. Kerry, tell us your story. Hello. How are you all? Oh, yes. yes. Um, I used to drive down at the Continental Hotel at Sorrento when they have all the nightclubs many, many, many years ago. Mm. And we used to do courtesy buses, and I had a couple having sex in the back of the bus. Jesus. In the back of the bus. In the back of the bus. How big was the bus, kids? Oh, it was 11-seater, mate. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you expect, though? If you're going to drive a big bus, that's some serious capacity. Yeah. To and from a venue (laughs) where people can get on the booze Mm. and get a bit amorous. What are you going to expect, Kerry? Frankly, I'm surprised it only happened the once. Uh, look, I had many things happen on that bus. It was just amazing. So I kicked them off. I kicked them off on the side of the road and they were half naked. So, yes. Now, that's yeah. rough, Kerry. That's Kerry. rough. Now, this story's taking a turn, <laughs> Kerry. Oh, come on, Kerry. Kerry. Say, what, what Kerry who made you, you angry, Kerry? Kerry? Oh, come on. I had other people on the bus wanting to just have a great night. Oh, oh, that's, that's, right. that's new yeah. information. I didn't, didn't know that. Kerry. <laughs> no. <laughs> and Kerry, was it difficult to negotiate the windy roads down there in Sereno we watching that action in the, in the rear view mirror? Oh, uh, no. It just... Just wasn't right. Just yeah. wasn't right. That's yeah. true, Kerry. It isn't right. Jeez, no, she's, it she's, isn't right. <laughs> she's hard, Kerry. She's hard. If there, if it was okay, Kerry, how about this? If there was no one else on the bus, mm. would you have let them keep going? No. You're a hardcore mm. Kerry. Because if they like had a maid, now if they had a maid in there, I would have had to have cleaned it up. Oh, good point. I didn't even consider that aspect. You didn't have to go there, Kerry. <laughs> that was one step too far. Six bowls of wine from Zonzo Estate for you, Kerry. You're going to need every last drop, <laughs> Kerry. Yeah, wash that memory away. <laughs> ben, what do you got for us? We've got to be quick, though, brother. 
Uh, yeah, I'll make it quick. I used to be a garbo back in the day, and I was around the city doing a run. Uh, I used to drive the truck that used to pick them up and throw them sort of over the roof. Mm. Uh, went into a laneway, and there was basically three three of these bins back to back to back. I grabbed the first one, threw that in the over the top, and as I looked back down to put it down, there was a uh, male and a female just going at it, um, unfazed that there was this big garbage truck throwing bins in. Um, <laughs> I had to put the bin down to get the next one, so I sort of waved him. So he actually, if you could imagine... They were doing it. They shuffled forward so I could grab the next bin. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I put that down, and then, then to make it even better, he he when I put the first one down, I went to back out to push it in, and he waved at me like no, no, no. He stopped. He pushed the bin back into the curb for me, and then and then kept going. Who says men can't multitask? Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. It's next weekend, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Royal Exhibition Building in Carlton. It'll be huge. huge. All right, let's That's do it. it. It's the final word. Yes, indeed. How does this work, Dino? Well, Jake in Pakenham, Swanee's playing for you. And the final word is where I chuck up a topic and these guys have to answer instantly going back and forth like a tennis match, if you will until someone stuffs it up. Dean and Murrumbina, Brownie's your boy. Good luck to both of you. Thank you very much, and pleasure speaking to you, Jonathan. No worries, Dino. It's a pleasure speaking to you. And, and Jake, what do you have to say to, you, to Chrissy? Uh, Christine, I have the utmost faith in your abilities. Thank you, Jake. That's nice. It's ill founded, Thank Jake. you for calling me Christine. I like that. That's nice. Mm. All right. <laughs> well, the first topic, gang, and it's coming up, I believe, the Logies... I want gold Logie winners. Swanee, you can kick oh. this off. Sorry, Jonathan. And Carl Stefanovic. The great Craig McLaughlin. It's uh, true. Really? Mm. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I fell off my chair when I read that this morning. Uh, Grant Denyer. <laughs> um, Georgie Parker. Mm-hmm. Kate Ritchie. Boom. Have to be Bert Newton. Yes. Ray Ma. Yeah. Um, definitely have to be Lisa McCune. Bomb. Yeah, she's won it a lot, actually. She did too yeah. in the early days, yeah. didn't she? John Woods. Croydon. Mm. Um, Lay down. Lay, Lay down, down, Sally. Lay down, you. No, I'm going to go. No, you're for not. A famous. No, he's lady. thinking. Her name is Tracy Grimshaw. No, she hasn't won it. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Trace? What's I wrong had, with you? I had Tom Gleason up my sleeve. I agree. Okay, that's one. Whew. All right, this that was hard. Brown, I think you're favoured here, and you can start it. It's Tom Cruise movies. Let's go. Days of Thunder. Oh. Mission Impossible. Bang. Top Gun. Top Gun series, because that is out. It's oh, that's good. quick to do that. Well done, mate. Vanilla Sky. Yeah, good one. Risky Business. Good film. Jerry Maguire. Boom. Great film. Great film. Oh, cocktail! One of the greats. Um, we got a level game. I had a lot. War of the Worlds, not a great movie, but I had. Was a, he in that? Was he? Yes. We got a great game here. It's one apiece. Was he? Yes. War of the Worlds. He was in the remake. The shocker. remake of War of the Worlds. Shocker. Uh, Jake or Dean, this is the final round. One of you is getting a VIP experience at this festival, and it's worth like 1600 bucks. It's wild. Wow. Oh, yeah, Dean, I'll be three sheets to the win. He'll have the spinnaker up. Don't you worry about that, Dino. Swanny, you're off, uh, you're off first, and the category is beer brands. Yeah, just clarify that. Yeah, okay. What beer, do you mean by clarify? Well, beer brands, as in... If Carl it's on New, the label. Carlton United Brewery is the company... And Carlton Raft is the, yeah. the beer. No, yeah, I want the beers. Draft. I want the beer, brother. Mm. Okay. You know, not parent companies. Asahi. <sighs> Carlton Draft. Mother's Milk. Oh, Peroni. Yes. Crown Lager. Uh, Geelong Bitter. Mm. I'll, I'll, accept, <laughs> Look, I'm, I'll accept that. Yeah. Melbourne that, Bitter. Yeah, it is. 4X. Good one, Swan. Still Wash that out of your mouth. <laughs> Two is old. Oh, man, I drank that warm as a teenager. Carlton Cold. Carlton Ooh, Cold. Carlton Cold. Ooh. Absolutely. That is magnificent. Bolter. Mick Fanning's beer. Yeah. Heineken. Bob. Mmm. 
I'm going to go with Light Ice. One of the great beers. West End. Great Northern. Super crisp. <laughs> Pirate Life. Pirate Life? Pirate Life. Sure. Stella uh. Artois. <laughs> or as I've heard it ordered before at Bogan Pub, Stella Artois. <laughs> uh, I'm out. Jonathan Brown. You must be pumped, Dino. Absolutely. You beauty. Got it, Dino. You've won. I might come with you. A VIP experience for you and seven mates. Jeez. What? Jesus. Why it's a great prize. Them, why didn't we give them both one for four people each? No, That's not how the world works, mate. Because Jake's a loser. Jake's a loser, aren't Jake, you, Jake? Jake, you are not a loser. Jake? Valiant effort, uh, Christine. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Seven mates to the great Australasian beer spectacular. You get merchandise, Dino. You get festival cash, a card even, and so much more. The Gab's Craft Beer Extravaganza hits Melbourne this month. 600 craft beers Jeez. on tap, plus wine, gin and whiskey stands and grain entertainment. Seriously, it's going to be amazing at the Exhibition Centre. Uh, tickets at gabsfestival.com. That well sounds done, so fun. Dino and his mates, his red light mates, will have a great afternoon. Absolutely. Dino, can you call us the Monday afternoon? after if you're still conscious. I'll attempt to call you. And Jonathan, not only good at last word, but a pretty good footballer as well. Ah, good on you, Dean. I Some love you, would mate. argue he was better at final word than he was in the last two yes. years of his career. And Chris, I'll uh, agree. Uh, I, I concur as well. Yeah. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. <laughs> you were valiant. I was. The way you hung on there yeah. was just magnificent. Because I'm, not a, beer, I'm n- not a beer drinker. You hung on like my backside in that last 10 k's <laughs> of marathon. This is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. You know, there's been a lot of talk about James Corden and whether or not he's a good guy. He comes across, obviously he's that English TV host mm. and instigator of the brilliant, unarguably brilliant carpool karaoke <laughs> where he sings in a car with an absolute bona fide superstar. We're talking Celine Dion, Adele, all the biggies, right? Does he have many other gears than carpool karaoke? Because he's a late-night host. Well, no, he seems to be very friendly and amiable, and I quite, always quite liked him. Um, and so I would read these articles about him being an ass hat, mm. and I just couldn't believe it. But I'm here to tell you that he is definitely an ass hat. <laughs> oh! He's, all for sure. Yeah. Like, if I was Judge Judy, if I was Judge Judy Shindlin, yeah, I'm like, 100%, you are not a very good person. Judy. What's the evidence? And the evidence uh, came out overnight where he was talking about um, a water shortage they're currently experiencing in Los Angeles where they're, they're trying to encourage people to have shorter showers. So a conversation ensued. But listen to the kicker, okay? Just listen to the very... Last piece of this audio. How long are people spending in the shower? This, they say average is 10 minutes. So far, Stop. Yeah. Fine. No. Yes. Fine. You're joking me. Fine. How long does it take? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think what I'm doing there for 10 minutes. But you pride yourself on not using soap yes. for shampoo. So shampoo, shampoo. Here it comes. I shampoo. use soap. I don't wash my <laughs> hair. Wash his hair. Yeah, yeah. I don't wash my hair. I wash it about every two months. Oh, jeez. James Corden washes his hair every two months, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Oh. I'm fine with that. However, mm-hmm. Hollywood Jack, how often is his show, television show on? Every night or once a week? Every night. Every night, late night, yeah. Five nights a week. And here is the loophole. Yes. If you are a person in the world with an ordinary job where people don't have to touch your hair... You can wash your hair once a year. It doesn't matter. But if you are fronting up to a hair and makeup department where those beautiful hair and makeup artists have to touch your hair, yes, you need to turn up. You need to show the respect to them and turn up with clean hair. That he's the sort of man he, now I know. I know. I can see mm. James Corden for who mm. he is. He's the sort of man that gets mad at a person who makes his coffee. He's the sort of man who's rude to waiters. Oh. He's the sort of man that abuses the guy at the post office. Mm. And he's the sort of man who lets a hair and makeup artist touch his hair that hasn't been washed 
in two months. Big bestie, isn't it? It's disrespectful. I had a shower when I got home last night. Oh, well done, girls, John. Well, the girls threw a bit of wax in my hair. If someone's going go to touch your, touch your hair, mm. make sure it's clean. Have some respect. What was that word? Ass hat. Ass hat. Official? Official. <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Tuesday. <laughs> what? Sam's already lost it. Welcome to the microphone, Sam. <laughs> Good morning, Melbourne. Are you laughing because you, your couple's I'm dressing? No, oh, no, there's that as well. That, oh, no, that's not like something to laugh about. Jonathan and I wearing the same hoodies and jeans, and like I'm just stop. Stop copying me. It's pretty. Now you want to be me. No, you so How do you know you're not copying me? No, well, is it cute? Every, why is would it cute, I cop- Dino? No, it's They're the not. biggest two cutie pies I've ever seen. I Don't agree. say that. A pair of kids. I'm laughing because, mm. you know, always just before the mics come on, mm. this is what I hear. Did you watch, did you watch Couch last night? <laughs> I said, no, no, mate, I missed it. I taped it. And he goes, oh. Language was a bit fruity. <laughs> fruity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to do a deep what does dive. That mean? What, what do you language? mean? Did you drop the... Stay dropping... tuned. Well, 7.20. Uh, stay stay well, tuned. I'm, All you have to do is I'm, hang I'm, on for another 12 minutes. If you hurry up and get through your break. I'm here till 7.00. I'm here till 9.00. Pull your car over. <laughs> You'll learn a couple of new words. The Dyson F- Apple. The, the F-bomb thrice. Fruity? Did he say, <laughs> did he he say did. the word fruity mm-hmm. or the other F word? Fruity three times. Really? Real fast. Like a truck driver. <laughs> Want to see what happens in the studio? Check it out on Facebook. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good morning, Melbourne. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Nova 1. I want some tropical stuff. I'm giving you a sense of the day and then we'll get to Brownie's uh, per- performance or your show last night where there was a lot of fruity language. I can't wait for this. He's been very excited about it. There's nothing better than a rude word live. Well, it, well let's just like in Brownie's well, we've words. Been, we've been dead out there. So we're not going to actually hear it. Let's just, in Brownie's words, let's just get my break over yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I sense the day is always a good thing. Mm. Well, the Prime Minister has refused to say if he'll quit politics after the election. Interview with Lee Sales. He said... Uh, Have you got some audio of it? No, I'll just do it. I'll just read it out. I'll read the quote out. <laughs> no, that is not something I'm contemplating because I'm not contemplating that being the scenario. Mate, you... Want to start mm. having a plan B? I would have thought, judging have by thought some so. of the polls. Bulldozer. I didn't understand Bulldozer. what the actual uh, headline meant, though. Like, as in, he's going to quit politics even if he wins? No, if he. Oh, quit politics. <laughs> but that would be ridiculous. Yeah, wouldn't I know. It? I just so thought, like, yes, he wins and then he walks away off so in the sun- so sunset. sunset. My only, you know, uh, my only comment on the whole um, quitting or even the ones who um, go to the backbench, you know, there's a, some sort of scandal oh, and they get demoted. Mm. It's like the equivalent of getting. Getting dropped to the reserves. Yes, but the idea that you're the sometimes you're the leader of the of, of a party or the opposition, and then there's some uh, backroom shenanigans, and then you get demoted, and then you're on the back bench. But mm. you're still sitting, there watching. You're still it? there watching, and they're behind you. It's like it's a weird one. It reminds me of you in the nightclub when the girl that you arrived with kissed someone else, and you're still standing there on the dance floor watching it happen. Yeah, I was giving it my all, though. You were giving it your all, but... <laughs> you were in the back bench the, that day. She was wasn't the, the girl you were taking home. I was on the back bench. Yeah. Is it like a cop being demoted to paperwork? Yeah, but then seeing everything happen. Right. You know, it, yeah. it is sad footage of the backbencher watching. It is. Yeah. That was, and that was me watching my the girl I went to the nightclub with dancing with another man. Yeah, well, kissing yeah. another man. Kissing another man, yeah. yeah. I shouldn't yeah. have been aroused, but... What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I moved on very quickly. Gil McLaughlin is waiting on the umpire dissent issue. Uh, by the way, ha- have a listen to him. He just seems a bit tired of the whole thing, Brownie. I actually believe it's pretty easy. Get on with it. <laughs> Stop complaining. The umpire's not going to change his decision. Simple as that. It is. Simple as that. Simple as that. You, you just got to have a little bit of common sense. Who so was for that? emotion, general emotion, where in the heat of battle, a player can be, you know, show some level of frustration towards themselves more than anything. Who was that talking? I was still laughing at your arousal. It's Gillen McLaughlin. Okay. Ever heard of him? Yeah. I have. I'm sad that he that he's he's leaving. Who's going to take post. over, Brownie? Who's replacing him? Oh, it's usually internal. They'll have someone from internal, Andrew Dillon or Travis Hall. It doesn't really mean that much, but uh, the AFL likes to protect their books. Jason Ackermanis. I told my friend, I said, oh, I'm sad that, you know, Gil McLaughlin's leaving. And he said, well, I'm, I'm sorry that you're sad, but I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot of that with, 
or just yeah. in He's done a good job, though. I he's, mean, got he good was ma- great. he's got a great mane, too, mm. isn't he? Great head of hair. Great oh. head of hair. McDonald's are selling its Russian businesses, but will try to keep its workers. They're just, they're, you know, their businesses, holding business in Russia, apparently no longer tenable. Um, but I just wanted to, the bit that uh, stood out for me was the shook. Where do you think uh, McDonald's is based? I think Mc- in all of the world, where is McDonald's, like, head office? Where is it? Where is oh, it centralised? It's, it's an American company. Yeah. But, um, Sick. It might be Chicago. Yeah, yeah I gave it away. Chicago-based company. Chicago. Mm. McDonald's is based in Chicago. Chicago. Uh, Adelaide's Big Bird Bandits have been spared Wait jail time. Wait a minute. Just one thing. They've got 850 restaurants in Russia that they're trying to sell. Who's going to buy them? Well, they're hoping to, uh, uh, they have a big them. Russian... A Russian buyer, not necessarily McDonald's. Just, just buy it by the, the sites. Yeah, what is it? The freehold. Okay, <laughs> Mc, McDowell's. Yeah, and turn it into yeah. Swanee, that's I hope how so they, that mate. those workers are not lovely. Like, that's why uh, McDonald's are huge. Is because they uh, they own the they are the land the landholders of the uh, of the that. premises. I don't really care about Adelaide's Big Bird Bandits. I just wanted to play the Sesame Street thing. So. One of the greats. They were freed from court. That's it, Dina. A man, a man has wrestled himself from a, free from a crocodile in a remote Queensland national park. God, yeah, I would love to see that. Good, is, that good, is there footage of that? No. That would be good to no, see. No. Gonna, just keep asking for footage and audio. I don't have, don't have any. Well, we do have... I've heard the audio of Lee Sales and... So, uh, yeah, yeah, but mine was better. Just me doing it was better. Mm. The, the best one is when uh, <laughs> Linda... Is it Linda Kozlowski? Mm. When she gets grabbed by that croc, crocodile yeah. dunder. <laughs> She way she just fights it off. Yeah, and grabs the necklace. Yeah, you know, stunning footage. It's a, it's a documentary. Unbelievable documentary that one. You know what he's. You know what he's doing. Don't you? <laughs> In what way? He's just thinking about a G banger right now. Yeah. Aren't we all? <laughs> yes. <laughs> La, couple of fin- couple of finish and Arby's it's Arby's two arousals in one break. I know this is, you're exhausted. Can't pick me. Arby's <laughs> Arby's ma- an Arby's manager. I've never been to Arby's, but it's a what is it? Well, it's a food. It's burgery. Yeah, too. you know, one of those b- b- burger and shakes, and it's, you know, those things mm. over in the states. Very burgery. This uh, this segment. Been talking about well, McDonald's. I've got two to finish with. An Arby's manager has allegedly urinated in the milkshake mix at, a fa- at the fast food eatery for his own sexual gratification. Oh. Investigators are now looking for any unlucky customers who brought the drink. Oh. Uh, the, <laughs> who Jeez. bought and drank the urine contaminated uh, shakes. Oh, God. Uh, so anyone who's purchased a milkshake from Arby's over there uh, has to... They need a receipt to <laughs> apparently they need a receipt. Oh, no. They need a receipt. But the only thing it's so there you go. There's a there's a a manager at an Arby's who's urinating in the milkshake. Has anyone it? here ever drunk wee? Nope. Oh, no. I can't remember what I got up to on footy trips. This morning. Um <laughs> that would have been like a, if, if that happened to me, I'd be like Michael Douglas in breaking down when he walks into that fast food place. Falling down. Falling, Falling down. down. Just go through right. but, you, you would not be happy at all. Remember that scene? Yeah, I remember it. The world's yes, oldest Yes, I remember it. It was really a pivotal scene in my life because when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I've I've had a few of those. I call them falling down moments where you lose your mind. Mm. The world's oldest woman has celebrated her what birthday? Thank you for the cake, by the way. Well, and I really appreciate <laughs> the gifts and the well wishes and flowers. 128th birthday. She has papers that said she was born in 1894. And also, you know, with always the, the old people, they always ask them what their, what their secret yes, is. You know, it's always is it? like it's a lemon every morning or it's a whatever. Mm. Two things. Wild spinach. This is Johanna Matsubuko from uh, Japan. She's definitely a smoker. As well. wild, wild spinach is the key to a long life. And... Milkshakes from our... Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Tuckin' footy! On the couch last night, new time slot at 6.30. Now, it's live television. Quite often people ask us, is this taped, pre-recorded? Well, obviously the replays are throughout the week. But not the initial one. The 6.30 version is uh, live. No dump button for Dino. Nah. Uh, which was required last night. Now, I'm gonna, it was a bit like an episode of Parkinson. Uh... Very topical guest, What's the it? captain of the Essendon Football Club, Dyson Heppel. Is it really like Parkinson? Was it like that? Well, it got uh, it got quite emotive and passionate. And first of all, I'm going to preface this by saying, well done to Dyson Heppel for fronting up, because quite often this day and age, Swanee, 
You know, clubs under pressure, players under pressure. They run for the hills. Or That's they hide, hide in behind. Well, can you explain, thank God we weren't interviewing you. Can you explain to me, um, and maybe people that aren't Bombers fans and fully across yes. the Bombers uh, story, why would they be reticent to talk at the moment? Because they're crap this year. Mm-hmm. They're crap. They're been what, going what's their record? Me. Well, they had, uh, and there were some high, lofty expectations leading into the season, okay. including Mick Mulder saying they'll win the premiership. They're two and seven. <laughs> oh, Mickey! Yes, two and seven, 20. Mickey. They're going to miss finals. They've got quite a few injuries, but they're just playing poor football. Lack of pressure, lack of effort from the outside. So, been a lot of vitriol thrown towards them. So, we put the call out to Dyson Apple yesterday, said, you're the captain of the club. Do you want to front up and... And he said not, yes. And he said yes. He said Good yes. on him. That 10 points for that. He's a stand-up bloke, Hebel. Maybe you knew he'd come on your show with a couple of Dorothy Dixes, you know, man, and you'd say, oh, Dyson, you're the best, no, you know, no. and then off he goes. <laughs> but did you, did, you, did you pepper him? Well, we didn't pepper him. We just spoke to him about some of the issues. Now, one of the things has been, and we won't play the audio of this, but he ran out, he played his 200th game on the weekend, and that was shit ass. And uh, they just didn't turn up at all. But he had a big... He God, had a, I wish he had, you'd said that on. Why yeah. don't you say that as part of the special comments, to, you know, when you're doing the game? Well, I could have got away with it because we weren't beeping anything last night uh, on our episode. But, you know, he, he, so when he ran out, Swanee, it was actually a beautiful moment. He had about 40 of his family members there. And when he ran out with the players, he went and high-fived them and gave his mum a hug yeah. and gave his sister a kiss and all those sorts of And they of responded things. by doing what? Responded by, uh, you know, laying an egg. And uh, got smashed. Go, got, got absolutely smashed. But you know what? He said it was one of the great moments of his career. It was his 200th game. Of course, it was his 30th birthday. He got criticised for that, Swanee. So oh, you're yeah, too relaxed. You know that shows the mindset of this mm. and the footy club because they went in and got smashed. And he defended. He said that had nothing to do with the result. Absolutely. Um, but then, as the interview sort of weaved on, he got more and more passionate and emotional defending his club and uh, talking about the way forward. And uh, things got a little bit fruity. He dropped mm. a couple of little soft ones that uh, Dino allows when I drop a couple of... An F-U-G-G-I-N. That's right, a couple soft of, one. Soft yeah. one. And, uh, yeah. Can we say that? We could say that. Go, we? mate. Do it, mate. Do uh, it. No, no, no Jack says maybe don't not say not. It. But anyway, you know, I've been guilty, Swanee, of dropping them every now and again, and mm. Dino just lets it slide through to the keeper. Nice. Yeah. But uh, so I've sort of looked around. I thought, just look at it. He's getting passionate. He's getting all mm. fired up here. And then... Uh, um, maybe uh, maybe he read the room because he just he just let a bigger one out towards the end. What does he want Dylan to plow through someone, give away a free kick, give away a 50 metre penalty and another goal? You know, this day and age, free kicks are given away so quickly. And I think that the hardness and the firmness and what you're talking about in being a nice football team, it's it's not about giving away free kicks or showing full-blown aggression. Or It's when the ball's there to be won. That's what we want to stand for. We need to just find that vibrant... And energy and, and work towards it. You know, I, f- I do. I f- feel the emotion, mate. And it's, you know, I want to absolutely have full belief. Jeez. Whoa. Mate, <laughs> I'll be sending a strongly <laughs> worded email into Fox Footy about it's, that it's, sort of language. I think that's wonderful. Swanee, I agree. Yeah, I've always sit there as an Essendon spot. I'm not saying I this. I go, yes, this is my man. That's right. I'm, yeah, that's he can right, swear. Exactly. He can swear. Well, he's passionate. Hey, he was passionate, exactly. You he's know, passionate, it was and he's so passionate that he's losing his, he's l- losing his mind a bit, which is good. Because he wasn't that wasn't deliberate, yeah. and obviously there was no beeps <laughs> live to no. So yes, I'm sort of sitting up. Yeah, I was up and about. I'm thinking, geez, this is exciting. But uh, so there you go. That was on last night. Dyson Apple. You'll see it uh, on the replays on the couch. Uh, but they'll be beeped out in the replays, won't it? I would hope so. Say well, so. no, the first couple we're going to let slide. Really? Yeah, yeah, great. Just, uh, a little bit of freedom. I reckon Jared and Robbo are going to see that and start swearing tonight like gangsters. Uh, like a couple of pirates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Kitty's here. No. Now it's time for Kitty's and a God, we love you, Kitty. Oh, I do. I only come for the for the theme tune. It's my favourite thing. It's there's nothing better than yeah, not rhyming, not scanning. <laughs> yeah, so I just that's my favourite so thing. That, song. that and random shouting are my here two favourite comedy things. Here I go again. My, uh, here I go again. It's the old journey number, isn't it? I think it is. Here I go again. Hey, Kitty. Like... Sam doesn't tell us anything. Did he do stand up with you on Friday night? He sure did. Oh, yes. yes, my friend was in the audience. <laughs> I got a text message from Mel Polomini who said, you're not going to believe the headline. She goes, by the way, I think our music teacher's got some very good good uh, connections. How'd he go? So it was just Preston Primary, wasn't it? 
Oh, yeah. It was, oh, was, uh, a, big it was a big gig. gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a, yeah. Preston Primary got a very big... Uh, huge. Well, they got For them. Well, not for me, but they got Kitty, they got Adam Rosenbachs, and they got Lloyd, Lloyd Langford. Langford. So. Wow. Yeah, it was quite the lineup. I mean, don't bother going to your local comedy clubs. Check out your primary school. <laughs> Unbelievable. Obviously, be careful with that, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't be ringing around primary <laughs> schools going, oh, I wonder if you've got any gigs on. Just thought we might come around. Was it good? Was it a good night? Great night, I thought. The last time I went to a school gig, um, I saw one of the dads sitting in the middle of the road in a box weeping. Oh. So that's how the night well, ended. I think that's the beauty of the primary school parents mm. is, you know, they're pretty keen for anything. They're so happy to I be mean, out. I mean, you could have put anyone on, you could have put anyone on that stage and they did. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and it would have gone all right. That's true. Cuz I they said I oh, will mind a car park for you and I went, "Oh, okay, thanks." So I got there. They said, "We'll put some wheelie bins in." There were three cars in the car park. All the parents had walked cuz they're clearly just on the beer. <laughs> yes. They got a night away from the kids like <laughs> Put it this yeah. way, I, was, I made I sh- made sure I came on first. Do you know what I mean? By the time Kitty got on, they were, lost. They were chucking oh, stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Chucking beer bottles. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Congratulations to <laughs> Logie nominated Kitty Flanagan. And not just for a show, most, a Fisk and most popular comedy program, the Silver Logie Brownie for most popular actress. She's up against uh, Deborah Mailman. For total control. Uh, yeah, she's not bad. She's mailman. not bad. Yeah. No, mailman. Yeah. <laughs> mailman. No, Carl Malone, the mailman. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of, uh, as your sister pointed out, a lot of, there's a lot of actual a lot of thespians there's a lot of in this category. In it's kind of like when you were on the other night with all the comedians. Bang! Like, Jeez, you come in hot today. What's <laughs> wrong with you? She's Comes fire. She's fresh. I don't know why you're attacking me. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know I'm not why I'm either. It, just, not... it feels like I need to get in first. Anyway, I feel like there's something coming. Well, and as Boya, Boyana Novakovic mm. yep, for Love good. Me, yes. Yeah. There's uh, Sophie Dillman. Oh, one of the best. For uh, Dillman, for so- How Men Away. A Dillman, Mailman. Deborah Mailman. <laughs> Sophie Dillman. And <laughs> Stan Anna, Anna Torv in the newsreader. Oh, and yeah. Ada Nika. Ada Nikodemu. What did I say? Ada. <laughs> yeah. You're all right. Like, you're can right. you smell oranges? You're What's not. going on? Smell you know, I can smell stupid makeup because you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think. Uh, I didn't think actress was a term anymore. I didn't think we were allowed to say actress. I, I thought everyone right, was just Brownie. an actor. I think you're right. However, it's the TV Week Silver Logie most popular actress. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. confused. Last year. You got a speech ready? If you win, uh, sure. Yeah, because yeah. you won. Are you going to thank the mailman and the postman? <laughs> Adda. Yeah, Adda. You, you, um, you, uh, you, Fr- you won an award in the in a French uh, yep. festival last year. Yeah. So yeah. you'd be ready for, you know, you're ready for a, a An speech. Australian one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah, I'll have a speech. <laughs> oh, well, I'm excited about the second season of this. Congratulations on your nomination. Thanks. Very well deserved. Also, you for are the a most popular actor. comedy program, that yeah. one, Fisk. It you? is so fantastic. Have you watched it yet, Brownie? You'd love it. I've seen parts of it, absolutely. It's oh, so right. enough. It's, enough. it's, it's enough. 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 Well, on, yeah, I saw sorry. parts of it of you, Pang, and I thought, that's He's enough a footballer. for me. It's like me. I watch the highlights. That's all you need to watch, just the sure. highlights. I cut absolutely. you up a package. What can we expect in the second season at Kitty Flanagan? Oh, uh, big things from Roz. Mm. Yeah, big things from Roz. Uh, she's uh, changing direction. Mm. Um, Marty, uh, Ray, obviously, uh, still doing nothing. Um, and Helen taking on the bulk of the work. Great. Yeah. Is she yeah. allowed at the cafe yet or is she still? Well, we're bad. actually changing, changing things downstairs. There's going to be a new cafe downstairs. I'm changing things downstairs <laughs> too. I think we all are. <laughs> it's going to be a, um, a, 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 a smoothie bar. Instead, okay, smoothie bar. Instead, so yeah. Well, Sam had to audition for the role this year. Sam's been cut. Um, oh. I won't lie to you. Uh, we oh. did want to bring him back, but there were quite a few crew members who said they wouldn't work with him again. So, uh, <laughs> no. We uh, are awesome. for the sake of the show. We had to cut him. Aaron role, which is a shame. He's Jenny's back. Jenny's back. Yes. Jenny's back and bigger than ever. Jenny's doing a lot of the heavy lifting this year. Fantastic. It was very funny last year. We just went, why don't we give you some more? You yeah. seem very funny. So, yeah, he'll, he'll be And we'll featured. give Sam some less. Yeah, a lot less. <laughs> Mate, happy oh, to do less. Happy to do less. Of course you are. wasn't a great experience, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Like on set. Old, uh, yeah, what's she like? Uh, what's uh, old bugger lugs like over here? She got the director sign on her chair. <laughs> Directs them around. Oh, yeah. yeah. Showrunner. Ooh, they don't even do, call them that in, in Australia, but she was a showrunner. Hey, what about, you know, what about uh, 
So there's Fierce is back, Ian Logie nominated. Have you been paying attention was back last night? You were You're hilarious. really hitting your stride, Kitty. And, and also yeah, the, the I'm making bi- the most of my final years yeah. in showbiz. <laughs> yeah. The big one, though, and it's what Hollywood Jack only wants to talk about because he loves Dave O'Neill. How's the junk? T- how's the. What's it called? The junkies. The junkies. Now the junkies podcast. going. The podcast going. Uh, you talk about junkies, junkies going well. We've got some. We've got some really nice fans. Like I've been doing some gigs, like you know, around the country. Junkies fans bring you lollies and chips and stuff, and just the leave them on the stage like offerings. It's really nice. There was a uh, episode recently about Tic Tacs. Is this right? Yeah. Really? Did the orange flavour come out on top? It's really it the is, only one. It that is you superior. Can, well, it's the only one that is like a lolly, isn't it? The rest are just a punishment. <laughs> It's just I like agree. Oh, the peppermint yeah. seemed to be very strong on the peppermint. <laughs> yeah. But they burn your nose. Yeah, they're too burny, and then the spearmint ones kind of go. Mm, that tastes like metal. Did, yeah, they're, they're not a good sweet. Did Orange you talk about it in Italy? It's not there. It's not their forte. Ah, did you stick talk, with the, stick with I didn't cards? Know that. It's yeah. interesting. Did you talk about how to eat them? If you know what I mean, one at a time, two at a time, or like I was crunch. I, I was like about yeah to put two, a half a packet in. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth it, is it? There's nothing in there. I don't know why Dave O'Neill... Dave O'Neill suggests them. He's the one that always says he wants something big in his mouth, and yet mm. he brings in the Tic Tac. Yeah. So, but there, there is a special way of serving them, we also discovered. There's a little... If you look on the inside... Oh, this is fascinating. Are we losing... I can I can hear people switching off. No, people don't um, expect anything else from you. Little round thing <laughs> on the top of the lid on the inside, and what you're supposed to do is you tip it upside down, open it, and one Tic Tac places into that. Anyway, have a, right. have a go have, at it, people. I have no, wondered no. what that... It's what that function is. It's a serving. Was. It's a serving. Serving thing. suggestion. So you can oh serve God. one no, tic tac. <laughs> oh yeah. Kitty out in Moorabbin. There's an American joint that sells all American. Yeah, snacks. USA Foods. Ooh, like been Jolly there? Ranches. And have you been that. there? USA Foods. It's fantastic. USA Lolly's not so great. I have to say because they're made a lot with um, high fructose corn syrup. The corn syrup. And I know and stuff it ruins like that. it. It's not, they're not great at lollies. No. And, uh, I agree. Why don't you do a podcast with Dan and his mates, mm-hmm. and you can sample all the uh, the best munchy foods. Yeah, I get real hungry sometimes. Isn't like, that what we do? Out of the blue. Yeah, that's, no, no, yeah. no, but actually, where they're, where they're in character, it's like an experiment. <laughs> like, so in real time. You, you line them up, do it in real time, and work out what's the best. Like, is it cheesels? Is it shapes? You know, what's the best munchy food? It's and what idea. is the best munchy food? Oh, cheesels, yeah. They're Australia's favourite cheese. What about my sausage rolls? Cheesels taste like cheese gone crunchy. Close second. That's yes, they good. do. Yeah. Hey. Sausage rolls, like party mm. ones. Yeah. Oh, boy. I know you've got to go. They're amazing. Um, do you know, I think it was Hamish Blake invented that really good way of getting the sauce on your sausage roll. Do you do that? No. <gasps> what is it? Well, to save you having to double dip, instead of putting the end of the sausage roll in, you get the party sausage roll and you like basically dip the top of it in the sauce like that and then you've just you've sourced your whole thing without having to go back in and double dip it's genius. at a party. It's genius. Yes. It He's definitely going to win the gold go. logie for that alone. <laughs> I'm sure you're glad you got me in this morning. It's been uh, it's been we brilliant. We wanted to see you. In th- well, I it's got to, I thrilling. get to see you, but they, they hadn't said to, get to see you. No, it's say congratulations. It's always a pleasure, I love, guys. You, I love coming in here. Good Thank luck you. at the logies and good luck with fists. We can't wait. Thank you. Do you want to see what this looks like? We'll get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie on Over 100. What if it? It's Aussie for travel. Wonderful to see Kitty. I've seen a lot of her. Like we did that. To, we did that gig on Friday night. Sort of have you been paying attention? Last night, yes. And, uh, and then this morning, and now she's off to shoot fish. So we'll see her on the other season two. Sorry, then we'll see her on the other side. Oh, wow. Last night, don't have you been paying attention this morning? So it was a it was an interesting little. Um, you know, I, le- I remember I tell you I learn a lot despite the fact that I see you guys every day, but things get missed. Nick Kyrgios, who I don't, not a big fan I of, know, but you, you love don't him. Like him, yes. He uh, he's his first celebrity crush. Anne Hathaway. Ah, yes. Who is very strong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's... That's what Nick said. I don't see it. But, but obviously I'm a bit older than um, Nick, so mm. she wasn't my first celebrity crush. Who was your first celebrity crush? Well, m- well female would have been probably a, a young singer called Samantha Fox. Yes. Mm. And male would have been Burt Reynolds. So you like boobs? Boobies are boobies. Yeah, I know. Who I've said that boobie? before. So true. Who but doesn't love a booby? It wasn't because of that. I thought she was a talented Boop. artist, and I really enjoyed her on the front cover of People magazine. Yeah, and, <laughs> and her and her chart topping song "Naughty Girls Need Love Too." They do. Mm. <laughs> well, they do. That's she's she's just, she's a prophet. I didn't even know it was a song. She's I just a thought prophet. it was a fact. <laughs> but may I just go around the uh, go around the, oh. the studio and first celebrity crush? John mine, Brown. Was, mine was Al, Al McPherson. Mm. Uh, yeah. Easily Classic. by the length of the straight. Classic. What about for and what any any anyone in the in the uh, of a male 
uh, that you thought maybe... Um, male. Not necessarily, no, thought, you know, no, I know what you mean, Tim. Saying, I loved him. Yeah. I loved Burt Reynolds. Uh, maybe Mahoney at a police academy. Mm, good choice, <laughs> You're mate. You're only human. Good choice. Swanee? My first male crush was Michael J. Fox. The oh, great Michael J. Fox. From I, Family Ties or Back I, to the Future? I loved him. Uh, Family Ties. And then back to, back to the Future, obviously. And my first female crush, probably like Danny Minogue or something. Just really? loved her, yeah. Close to home. Dina? Dina, well, I'll go to you, and then I'll go into the young, young man. Noni off Play School? Yes. What? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. something stirred. Jeez, you started young. You were a horny <laughs> child. This was, yeah, about 89. So Noni. How old yeah. was Noni then? Ah, uh, 40. Mm. <laughs> How old were you? Four. Big wow. age gap. Mm. <laughs> like the older women. <laughs> Kelly Slater was the coolest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. cool. yeah, yeah. Jack Charles, the, the child. I oh, it was because, like, the, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to find out because the, the, I'm sure yours will be someone who's about 12 years old now. So my first female was Cameron Diaz in Charlie's Angels. Good. Magical. Yeah. In Charlie's she Angels. Was so great. <laughs> I liked her in The Mask Drew as well. Barrymore. That's oh, a good movie. Jonathan, yes. And then the male one was Jules Lund because I wanted to be him. Jules Lund. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jules Lund. Where's Jules really? now? In grade six, I had a PowerPoint of what I wanted to be when I grew up, and it was a photo of Jules Lund. <laughs> <laughs> that is magical. Okay. You know that we could get Jules Lund in, yes. for sure. I know, oh. but he's lost his looks. Oh, how? Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, we'll low. get him in and play him that bit of audio. <laughs> that is really harsh. Oh, and well, yeah. Well, not true. I'm glad I asked. After this, we're going to find out Tony Martins. I'm going to find out where Jules Lund is. <laughs> Brownie, the podcast. Morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your chilly Tuesday morning, but things are going to get hot and funny in here very, very soon because oh. Tony Martin. It's yes. a Tony Martin half hour. It's good to be on this foul mouth program. I heard yes. Brownie swearing up a storm yeah. earlier. He loves just, it. I was carrying on from our show last night. On yeah, the couch. on the couch. It's um, very blue. Can I blue? Can I fruity? Draw, it's very fruity. Can I draw attention to this uh, soundtrack? Have you asked for this? Oh, well, we had it last week, and I had so many people go, that sounded great, the Minder theme on Nova. Oh, it's a great song. Sounds so great. It's it is one of the, the great themes. Good. It is. <laughs> it is. It's bringing the feel good. Try to stop it. Yeah. Tone, we've got a bunch to get to, but after this, can you tell us who your first crush was? Oh. We all gave ours before. All right, it'll be someone from the previous century. <laughs> That's not bad for you. <laughs> Tone for you also later. Ask Brownie if you get on. It's a B can... Smith from Prisoner. Uh, oh, don't spoil it. If you win <laughs> 10. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. The Chrissy Sam and Brownie on Over 100. Tony Martin's in because it's a Tuesday. Yes. Who are your crushes? <laughs> oh, crushes. Okay, well, this is going way back. But when I was very young, I remember being quite keen on uh, Anne Margaret in Viva Las Vegas. Oh, she was gorgeous. The Elvis movie. And that little shimmy. Yes. And she had pointy boozies in a, you know, like really constrained. Constructed bra. Not yeah. that you would have noticed no, that. At age six, I didn't know what was going no. on. Brownie, yeah. I'll help you here. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. No idea. I'll tell right. you who she is. Right. She's Cameron Diaz's mother in Any Given Sunday. Whoa! Oh, there you go. Way. Thank you, Sam. I'm all over it now. <laughs> okay, this Love is shaking it. hands. She loves a drink. Mm. Beautiful. In that, in, she... in, yes, her character in that movie. Was she was she just was she method, method acting or I, a reflection I don't know. of the life? Don't, don't, uh, do you know much about your crush? Do you know much about her in her I, personal life? As I we actually do. Talk about Anne Margaret in 2022. <laughs> she came out to Australia in this century mm. to appear in a mini series uh, called Blonde about Marilyn Monroe, mm. shot right here in Melbourne. And bloke who worked on the show said um, that she had a number of imaginary friends. Oh, bless she was, <laughs> she was talking to. She liked to drink. On the set. In real life. Mm. And this bloke whose responsibility it was to make sure she was on the set uh, every day yeah. said the best way to get her there and to do things was to include the imaginary friends in the conversation. <laughs> hey, Brownie, so, what would have that wants, sounded like? Uh, no one wants to drink alone. So it'd be like, <laughs> and do you want to do this? Oh, I'm not sure. I tell you what, let's ask Invisible Barry. Barry, oh my you, yeah, he's God. into it. I think you should. And she said, okay, then. That's I right. Will. But she still looked great. Big. What else? Well, that's got all tone? that matters. It's good to as see we every are week. all finding out every day. <laughs> all right. Uh, what are we talking about? Okay, Twitter. Now, I saw Sam Pang on Twitter last night. 
putting up a glamorous photo of his dressing room. I thought I'd welcome back that, you know, having been paying attention on his back, so I thought I'd just do a tweet. How active First are one. you on Twitter? No, not overly active. You are, you're a publicity machine, Pang. That went hey, great. Just doing though. my bits, Wani. Yeah. It was and just a small room full of boxes, but that absolutely was ruling Twitter last that, night. That was the Channel 10 uh, dressing room that I walked into, Brandy, yeah. which is small as it is, right? And yeah. we all share it. That's fine. Yeah. It's no, there's no star. There's no, uh, you know, no prima donnas in there. Mm. But even in... For the small dressing room tone, mm-hmm. for it to be filled with empty boxes. I'm going, yes. you know, just a little bit of room, yes. a little bit of elbow room to get the shirt on. Were you then trending? Were you trending on Twitter? Always I don't, trending. I don't think so. But do but, you know that that room, that slender side of the building dressing room for years was known as the Jerry Lewis room? Why? Because Ooh. Jerry Lewis, the uh, now deceased comedian, uh, appeared on the panel and apparently he walked into that dressing room. They gave him that dressing room. He's walked in and he's gone, nope. And he's just got out, <laughs> got in the lift and gone down and started getting into a cab. You and just being <laughs> dragged back into well, the Well, can you studio. imagine the dressing rooms that Jerry Lewis would have had in his times when he would have had whole floors of a hotel? <laughs> yeah. And he's walked into that. And Jerry Lewis is a man, by the way, who never wore the same clothes twice. Like, he'd wear a shirt, and then that would go in the bin. And then wow. he'd just mm. open a new one. Jeez. What a tosser. <laughs> Wow. Was that a little bit worrying for you, Sam, when you saw the empty boxes there ready to go? I thought... <laughs> so you're, on the, you're about to get kicked out? <laughs> I thought well, Tommy, Tommy Wiseman was hiding in one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he sleeps. Uh, I was going to mention on Twitter something... Because gro- people talk about negativity on Twitter and trolling and hate. Mm. But there's so many great running jokes. And yeah. a good one that's going on at the moment is people put up this phrase, this was my multiverse of madness. Now, okay. what does that mean? Obviously, it's Doctor Strange with his multiverse at the moment. And the one I saw was a picture of Magnum P.I. Mm. in an episode of Murder, She Wrote. Whoa. Did you know that happened? I didn't know that Whoa. happened. Whoa. I was, up, was he playing a character? Or? I looked up playing the plot Magnum. description. Listen to this. Yeah. Jessica comes to the assistance of Magnum when he's framed for two murders that occurred during her vacation in Hawaii. Wow. Whoa. Great. That's a I would love to watch that episode. Me too. That's a multiverse. So, and- Steve Urkel once went into the Full House house. There you go. There's a multiverse <laughs> of really? madness. It's humongous. There's a multiverse of madness. Have you got one, Brownie? Oh, I, I was trying. To, I was racking my brain before. This is not exactly the same premise, but uh, Robert Dippy had a many go. <laughs> yes, from one universe. One universe yeah. uh, starred as a truck driver. In the Flying Doctors. Oh, there you go. As the, Bruce, the truck madness. driver. Yeah. Absolute I madness. He got beaten in a fight. That was unusual. It was, was unusual it? because yeah. I know that he. you just couldn't help but think it was Dipper. Yes, <laughs> so but it was really know, Bruce. Yeah, right. but it's Dipper. Have you got one? I've got one? a couple. Yeah. One. He got beaten in a fight by Robert Grubb. Which is very unusual. Un- oh. Grub with two Bs. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in the episode. Yeah. yeah. You remember character names from that episode. <laughs> no, Robert Grubb's the actor. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are you wow. sure? Okay. It's a good, it is a good character it is a good name. name. Robert Grubb with two Bs. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. who you're talking yeah. about. I've got a couple. I just thought uh, the Monkees, the band, yes. um, were on Brady Bunch. Oh, wow. as themselves. As themselves. Wow. Yes. And I was actually... Um, uh, Lockie Hume's character in Offspring in yes. that universe had a crush on Chrissy Swan. Dr. Clegg. Yes, Dr. Clegg. Had a crush on the real you. Yes. Right. Which was very right. weird watching the show and going, yeah. I'm, not in that, I'm not in that universe. Okay, here's yeah. a weird one. Here's a really weird one. I've had a running thing with Sam for years where when we do something, we try and get each other into each other's projects. Mm. And so I did a show year, about 10 years ago called A Quiet Word on the ABC where I just interviewed celebrities. You so ever see it? It was wonderful. So it's really low budget and it's just me and someone. So there's no room for any guests. So I'm going, how do I get Sam into this show? Mm. And then we had Carrie Fisher on, oh. Princess Leia. Yeah. Turns out that Sam was in a stage show with her. What? what? <laughs> Explain that. I was, I, no, not in a stage show. I ended up on stage with her. So her one-woman show called, uh, uh, what was it called? It was Wishful on, Drinking? It was yeah. on Broadway. It was on Broadway. And I went over there as, uh, I was just in New York by myself. Yeah. And I went to see the show, and then she picked out someone from the audience, and I ended up on stage with, really? with Carrie Fisher. I didn't know and this. Explain what you were doing and I, what you were wearing. 
Drinking. What was I? What was I wearing? You were wearing the, the Princess Leia hair oh, bun. Yeah, she they what? put the hair bun on on you. She, it was part of her act. You know, I mean, you get oh, a volunteer you from the audience. Turned order. up to the show dressed as Princess Leia. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> Sam alone yeah, walking on the streets in New York yeah. dressed as Princess Talking Leia. To I dressed. No, I actually came as Lando Calrissian, but <laughs> back then you were allowed. You were allowed to do that back then. But um, and then she got. Me, oh, she picked me out of the audience, and then I was up on stage with Carrie Fisher for about. Five minutes as so she went through a thing. I had to put the put the the, the wig on, and then wow. and then um, and then, then <laughs> so that was like I told Tone about this, and then she... so, so at the end of the Quiet Word episode, I go, I'm going to bring out one of your former co-stars. That's fantastic. <laughs> out comes so her bag with flowers, and I, she was reaching for mace. I swear, yeah. going, who is? I don't remember this person. <laughs> And she didn't. Why would she? She would have, she would have done that show 500 times. Time. Exactly. And have that. you ever been more embarrassed in your life? It's like, is that Does that stand out as a very humiliating moment? Which bit? When Carrie Fisher looked at you like you were poo on her shoe. You're talking about the man who took a girl to a nightclub and the girl <laughs> left him on the dance floor and was kissing another guy. And then at the end of that night, I borrowed 10, 20 bucks from the guy to get home. I'm not embarrassed by that. That was a, that was a big thrill, a big honour to be in your production, Mr. Tone. Tales from the Multiverse of Madness. <laughs> Tone's here. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. In my Tone's here. Oh, it's so good to be uh, in stereo. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of AM radio uh, talk back mm. to get ideas for Sizzletown. And I challenge myself. I go, OK, I'm going to drive from my house to the shops and in five minutes... I have to, on 3AW, I have to hear something I can turn into comedy. Oh. And it always works. Really? <laughs> okay, what have you... Never uh... oh, I might have, did I mention this one? Uh, one weekend they had a bloke, so the topic was, call us in with something that used to be cheaper in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, isn't that everything? <laughs> Literally everything. Yeah. And they had isn't, a guy. It better, isn't it better call in, give us a call with something that's, that's that was more expensive in the old days? <laughs> yes. Um, but nonetheless, there were a lot of calls. Yeah, I bet. What, what <laughs> well, were they yes. saying? Oh, well, bread. The, the guy I liked was the guy who goes, uh, um, I remember in the old days you could get uh, two potato cakes for 20 cents. <laughs> and, then, and then he said that. And then off mic you heard of someone going, he goes, hang on, hang on a sec. Sorry, that's three potato cakes. <laughs> <laughs> but I was listening to... Uh, um, no doubt, whoever that caller, his mother said, Daryl, I think you'll find it was three. Yeah. Is there anything? I, <laughs> uh, I reckon I can remember three for a dollar. Three, for a three dollar. potato cakes for a dollar? Yeah. That'd be a I mean, dollar that, each now, wouldn't they? Yeah, minimum. A, a minimum. That is great yeah. value. As and also, can... still, it's a good way to spend a dollar. I think we've saying. proved that that is a good phone topic. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, mm. the, uh, and then I was listening uh, one more morning and an absolutely mad person was on talking insanity yeah. and then I realised it was the host of the show, <laughs> Neil Mitchell. He <laughs> 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 was talking about the independent parties. He goes, oh, these, these independent parties, the wackos, I call them the wacko parties. I mean, what are their policies? As far as I can tell, it's just free apple pie for everyone. <laughs> really? I for that. Neil, I have on now. Jeez, he gets uh, short with some of the calls, doesn't he? And then he goes, and then you've got the Greens. The Greens, what are their policies? Apparently it's just free dope for everyone. That's <laughs> good news. Okay, I haven't been paying enough attention to the policies of these minor parties. <laughs> I don't seem to remember hearing ads saying <laughs> Free, free apple pies and free dough would sweep you to power, I would have thought, too, by the way, if you run on that. Absolutely. And then, uh, of course, obviously, uh, you've got the ads for... Uh, is it Clive Palmer or Craig Kelly? Which one is the Prime Minister if they win? I feel like they're the same thing. Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. But then you've got Craig Kelly's ads are all just, I, if I'm the Prime Minister, there will be no more lockdowns. I'm going, mm. is anyone promising lockdowns? <laughs> The figures are literally the worst they've ever been and there is not a single danger that there's going to be another lockdown. No. I, I will promise no more lockdowns. I will bring it in to Gangnam style. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no more penny-farthing bicycles on our streets if I'm elected. I'm not going to miss those ads going after. Is it, it's Saturday, isn't it? It's almost over. Is yeah, it it's over? almost over. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Every second house has got one of those posters at the front. 
Those, uh, Where you are, definitely. Geez, uh, Kuyong, it's, Kuyong, it's, God yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Mon, Mon mm. Ryan, no, Frydenberg. V, Frydenberg. Yeah. Yes. They're everywhere, are they? Mm, they are everywhere. God, it's good to see you, Tone. What's it's Sizzletown? What's the latest for Sizzletown? Uh, well, Sizzletown is out now. Well, I think we've we got time for this clip. Absolutely. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah we've we'll got to get it away. Sure. Okay, yeah. it's got a lot of beep swear oh. words, but given the language I've heard on this show this exactly. morning, this is... Uh, sure it's from Sizzletown or not on the couch? You never know after last night. One of our callers uh, talked talking about the movie The Batman. Just play a bit of it. So you didn't like it, The Batman? Yeah, it's too f- long, mate. Yeah? It's Exciting, a- though? Well, most of the f- actions in the trailer... Right. <laughs> Not enough of it. Yeah, I mean, mm. most of it's just Batman standing. Yeah. That <laughs> you guys really f- good at standing. Right. Just standing, listening to people, standing, mm. looking at f- paperwork and... F- yeah, is he? At one point, he's standing there while the bomb's about to go off in his face. Really? The bomb goes off and blows him across the room. You go, I could have told you that was happening. The numbers were decreasing. Well, that doesn't sound good. And the world's greatest detective can't read numbers, apparently. <laughs> That does happen. That's an accurate description of something that happens in the Batman. So there's a new episode of Sizzletown? Uh, there is a new one, and oh. uh, it's got something... It's become inexplicably popular because I've talked about football for the first time. Wow. Yeah. It's, ba- it's completely baffling. I don't even know what code I'm talking about. Well, you're Remember on once Fox we footy? had to do t- talking footy? It was because someone uh, shouted out a swear word during the minute silence at the Anzac yes. Yes. Oh, oh, game. No, anyway, that led terrible. to some foul mouth comedy on Can the Can I program. ask a personal question? Please do. Is the cat translator in this latest episode? It's not in the latest one, but the cat is uh, working on new material right now. Fantastic. Wherever you get your podcasts, get Sizzle Town. Tone, have a good week. We'll see you next Sunday. Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Mm. One man. Many questions. Why do they have different sizings for men and women in shoes when the length of the foot is the same? What colour are your undies today, Brownie? I just want to ask Brownie what is his skin regime that it keeps him so good looking? Have all the answers. I run on me fight. Ask Brownie. Oh, he's ready. He's ready and he's got all the knowledge. All he's omniscient like God. Oh, God. 13, 20, 4, 10. Are you ready, Dana? What is your question? I'm ready, brother. What do, you, what do you two need to be ready for? Your face. Hey, Pam, good morning. <laughs> good morning, guys. How are you? Very good. Hey, mate. How Come on, Pam. Give him, give, him, give him your best. Look, it's a pretty easy one, but I want to know, winter is coming. What is your favourite red wine? Mm, great question. Favourite red wine? Uh, there's one called John's Blend, mm. which was made by the boat that used to make Grange. It's about 30 bucks a bottle compared to 900 bucks a bottle. That is a great tip. It's great hard to tip. find those. Ooh, it's a Shiraz. Uh, it's nice in the winter. John's right. Blend. John's, John's Blend, Pamela. John Glatzer. Yeah, readily available, John? Uh, no. Nah. Right. You need to know the right people, so oh, yeah, um, that's good. you need to get, you know, just put the put uh, word out there. Find a distributor and you'll just enjoy it in front of the fireplace, Swanny. Very nice. John's Blend. Donna in Lilydale, what's your question for John? Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to know how worms mate. How do worms, how do worms mate? How do worms go to pound town? <laughs> you know I mean? um, well, they wrap each other, uh, they wrap each other together. They, they, Hang on. They, sorry? I think they might be hermaphrodite. I think they might be both mm. sexes. Mm. Does that ring a bell? And they work each other, they, they work around each other. I don't know. Mm. I feel like then there's wow. no, no boy worms or girl worms. No. Well, the last time I looked in the compost, there was a lot happening there, Swanee. Oh, don't yeah. they wriggle? Jeez, <laughs> and jeez, they can breed too. Can't they? Absolutely. So, oh. uh, and they like it dirty. Oh, absolutely. Mm. John's so, blend, you say? Is <laughs> 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 that the one? How do worms make? So you you haven't seen them. Mating, have you? Uh, I can't say I've seen in, in uh, the wild, no. Maybe, maybe you have. Like, maybe that's what happens when you well, pull up compost, the rock and they are, they are all everywhere. flipping out. Astrid in Geelong, what's your okay, question Astrid for nice. Large John? Hi, I would love to ask why are tree trunks brown and leaves green? 
because what? human beings were everything from white to black, but all trees are the same. Mm. Well, are they? The silver birch is a white tree. Mm. Yeah, different coloured leaves. Uh, can we just reframe that question again? Sorry, well, it's a simple so question. Go. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm just just try, I'm just trying to make sense of it. But there are as many. I'm not buying time. No, you no, are. No, no, I'm generally not buying time. I just want to make sure I'm answering the correct question. Why are tree trunks brown and the the leaves green? Why is there a a change in the in the uh, colour? How did the trees organise this? Why is it the way? <sighs> Why is your name, Kate? My name's Astrid. Oh, I'm not the wrong person. What the hell is going on? What is going on? <laughs> Matt, have you had, you had a couple of Johns blend this yeah, morning? What, I wouldn't mind why it. is your name Kate? I was looking at the wrong caller. <laughs> Astrid, the wrong call. I was looking at the wrong caller. Oh, my God. I can't. Yes. Astrid just asked, why are tree trunks brown and leaves green? And your response was, why is your name Kate? <laughs> Mate, you've lost your mind. Um, uh, 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 I can't. Because the uh, the leaves, uh, they they receive the oxygen, uh, sorry, the carbon dioxide, and the, the tree is brown and hard uh, and, <laughs> oh, age, well, sorry, it's aged because uh, it's there to protect uh, itself. It's it. That one hundred percent feels correct. <laughs> no further questions, please. Yeah, that's good. let's go to Kate. Kate I like that. That comes in right when he's really struck. That's right. Good <laughs> morning, guys. Good answer. I like Great it. answer. Okay, what do you got? Good morning, guys. Love the show. Um, you, Brownie, please tell me as a commentator why they call Vlaston from Richmond. Stone. I could answer this one. Yeah, well, that's how Why? Why? I can't deal with that. No. So annoying. You know the answer, though, don't you, John? Well, you answer it for us, Sam. It's my understanding that Nick Vlostone was asked for the no. correct... Hey. Kate. Oh, Kate. here we go. He was asked for the correct pronunciation of his name, and he said Vlostone, and that's why it's... You know, if, if, if someone says, my name is Vlostone, True. Nick Vlostone, well, then call it that. <laughs> but that's not how it's... Speaking of names, Kate, why is your name Astrid? (laughs) (laughs) Finally got that right. (laughs) Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Something's going on. I've got two kids at home today. You've got three Three. kids at home. I'll be staying away today. Sam, kids are what happen when you, you know, have have a family. And um, my eldest 13. I'm living at the Olsen. (laughs) <laughs> Things are good at home. Can I move in? Great what? room service. <laughs> Great room service at the Olsen. Absolutely. Um, I um, <laughs> uh, so I've got my thirteen-year-olds at home already texting me. My, my my legs feel weird when I'm walking. Can you come straight home after work? Can you come home? And I'm like, I actually can't today. I can't. I've got. Uh. Too much on that, you know. If it was, if it was doable to cancel, I would. But some things are not yeah. doable to cancel. Jackie Felgate, the god of the Lord of the Dance here in <laughs> Melbourne, who knows everything, she does. Supposed to the one school in the western suburbs, uh, eighty-three relief teachers they required. Whoa! There is something going down. It's a big school. I know. Is it because the last week they were talking about flu rona? Have you heard about that? No. It's where you get the flu and coronavirus right, so all in one go. Oof. That is not ideal. It's probably not a bad one to get if you get through it because your immunity would be very oh, strong yeah. at the back end of it. Superman on the other That's side. That's true. For a whole two months. Big whoop. Big whoop, I say. Yeah, the uh, dad school uh, teacher had to take a class of 120. Oh, my God. <laughs> Multiple year levels. What movie did he put on the start? I was going to say. Yes, he wheeled yes. in on the wheeled. trolley. Did he get 20 of them to help with yes. that task? Oh, uh, wheeling in the trolley. Fight bes- between uh, Shawshank Redemption and uh, what's the best chick flick? What's the go-to oh, chick flick, you reckon? Mm, Bridesmaids? Predator. No. Um, Exorcist. The, uh, Le- the Thelma and Louise. Thelma, Thelma and Louise. Yes. Um, but just, just, I just wanted to mention it in case you think you're losing your mind and you're like, oh, my God, I've got to go to work, I've got sick kids. I've got... It's, all, it's just the pandemic is the gift that keeps on giving, oh, isn't it? I've even heard the H word used. Heroin. Homeschooling. 
What? <laughs> heroin what? is a, heroin would be a would what be a the thrill. H word. That's what mums were. Homeschooling. Yuck. Is back in nah. some areas. Nah. Really? Apparently. Well, not for Sam. Anyway, not at the old Not at the old one. It's not. Show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Unless it's a weekend. Area 100.